let's move now to a sensitive religious topic, Christian missionizing in the Jewish state. Now, proselytizing is not unknown in Israel and technically not illegal by itself, but it is illegal to offer any material inducement to proselytize or to, or to proselytize to minors. And whatever groups do proselytize here tend to keep a low profile. But in recent weeks, a new station on cable television in Israel called God TV, or Shalano in Hebrew, has raised that profile. It is accused of proselytizing Christianity in Israel on the air. Here's how the channel itself promoted its mission, or I guess you could say missionizing. We're going to preach the Jewish Jesus to the nation of Israel. Both Jew and Arab are going to hear the gospel presented to them in their native tongue. This is historic. This is supernatural. And this is God ordained. And we want you to be part of history in the making. Now, Israel's Council for Cable and Satellite Broadcasting is now reviewing the license it granted God TV to decide if it has violated the terms of that license. Well, for more, we're now joined from Jerusalem by Rabbi Tovia Singer. His organization, Judaism Outreach, is the one that uh, really uh, brought that uh, video that we saw to public light. Rabbi Singer, thanks for joining us. What can you tell us about this God TV or Shalano and what its mission is. You know, as it turns out, the video, the segment you just played was wisely taken down by Ward Simpson, who's the president and CEO of God TV. God TV is huge. They broadcast in some 200 countries worldwide. They secured, as you mentioned, the Shalom channel on Hot TV. That's huge. Hot TV reaches about 700,000 thousand Israeli households, not people, households. And their their mandate, he says, is to bring the Jewish people, and it's not just adults, but he's breaking the law. He wants to bring nine million Jews to know about the Messiah Yeshua. Let me just give you some numbers. Around a third of the Israeli population are minors. This is completely illegal, and that's one point. So this is a very dangerous turn. There's a second point that I think uh, is even more disturbing. These missionaries are engaging in a practice of sort of blurring the distinctions between Judaism and Christianity in order to lure Jews who would otherwise resist a straightforward message. They're using language, as you just played, messianic. Well, the messianic movement is a Christian sect. It's a Protestant sect. So they are very careful to use Jewish terms. Don't say Jesus Christ. Do say Yeshua the Messiah. Don't call it a church. Call it a messianic congregation. So what we have is a consumer fraud issue. So what we what we what they will gain access to the, the hearts and minds, and he's right, of millions of Israelis with the message, but it's fraudulent even by Christian terms, this is very dangerous right. term. Now, Rabbi Singer, we did ask a represent. We did ask God TV if they wanted to appear on the program. They said uh, because of the current possible legal situation, they would not. So I guess I have to present some of the case. As I said, uh, proselytizing in and of itself is not illegal, but you point out illegal the minors, and obviously it, you can't control who watch your TV. But why in the Jewish state? Why not allow? Free, I guess a, you could make the argument freedom of religion, allow missionizing uh, and allow Christians to come here and sort of plead uh, their case. In what universe, in what free country, which we share uh, ideas of liberty and free speech, as you mentioned, are minors allowed to watch anything they want to? In the United States, there are videos, there are films that are restricted and minors can't watch them. This is not about free speech. In Canada and Austria, hate speech is illegal. But as it turns out, this is a step further. This is a step of being completely dishonest about what they're selling. I, I, I'll just show this to you very quickly. You're you're not going to see this, but the missionaries give this out to evangelicals to teach them how to convert Jews. It's a, a messianic soul winner's card. Call, don't say Jesus Christ. Do say Yeshua the Messiah. Don't say come to church. That doesn't sound Jewish. Come to a messianic congregation. You don't see crosses in their presentations. Right. Rather, they're synagogues. And that's, so that game is extremely dangerous. Because, I mean, imagine... 
imagine uh, just this for a moment. Go ahead. No, because I do want to raise a very important point because you mentioned evangelicals. And, of course, Israel has welcomed political support from the evangelical community. Uh, is, it, is this a, a, a case where it's kind of a hard to draw a distinction between that support from evangelicals and the desire many of them do have to sort of proselytize? Many Israelis are really shocked by what just happened. And Jewish people live in Judea and Samaria. They, they might as well have been kicked in the head by what happened. Uh, the, for the viewers, these evangelical Christians, they're not Roman Catholics, not Eastern Orthodox. They believe in what's called premillennial dispensationalism. It's beyond the scope of this broadcast. But what is key is, number one, they believe that the Jewish people are chosen and they reject replacement theology. And they believe that the land of Israel belongs to the Jewish people. They're natural allies of Israel. This is the largest voting block in the United States. Seventy million evangelicals on fire for Israel. However, there's a second issue here, and that is they believe not only that the Jews have to be converted to Christianity based on some great commission of Matthew 20, it is worse than that. They believe, based on Matthew 23, 39, that Jesus can't make a second coming unless the Jews are first converted to Christianity. You are holding up the show. So this is part of a larger theology most people are not familiar with, and both are going on at the same time. One other point. They, these, I do not want to smear evangelicals so that people think that evangelicals love Israel just because they want to convert us. These are two independent issues. However, that said, they will use their love for Israel and support for Israel, which is, which is genuine, in order to say to the potential convert, say to them, look, we love the Jewish people, and those Christians that persecuted Jewish people, they weren't real Christians. Would you accept Yeshua in your life today? So that's where the entanglement takes place, and we need to untangle that right now. All right. Well, certainly, as you said, it is a complicated issue, and this issue has caused quite a stir here. Rabbi Tovia Singer of Outreach Judaism, thank you for joining us on I-24 News. Thank you for having me.